Well, hey, this is the Beyond the Dojo podcast. I'm Lauren. If you haven't forgotten, I'm Jeremiah. <laughs> you may have forgotten by now because we took another little hiatus, as we always do. I'm going to be honest, man. It's hard to get topics now. Like, we've talked about a lot of stuff. We have. And it's like, what else we talk about? You know, yeah, it's like that married couple that's been married for like 60 years. I know. And they just grunt at each other because there's really nothing else to say. So it's like we've been married in dog years to this yeah. podcast, basically, since it's only been around for like yeah, two and a half that? years. Yeah. Yeah, that's So if you guys though. have podcast topics, you can put them in the comments. Absolutely. That's always nice. Or email us. It's Absolutely. in the description. Or if you know, cat, I swear to God, I'm going to kill you. I have ammo. To squirt the cat in case she messes with the camera. Yeah, she just hit the tripod. <laughs> I don't generally threaten her life, but it's an expensive camera. Yeah. We try to upgrade a little bit. Yes. We try to get fancy with it. We are fancy. So we were thinking, even though it is um, actually February, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to reflect on 2021 mm. and kind of talk about our resolutions of sorts for 2022, mm. even though we're like a month and a quarter or so in. Um, so 2021, um, far, as far as karate stuff goes, mm. do you remember that back that far? That was a long time ago. Do you remember back that far? I only remember like a couple things. I remember at the beginning of the year, whenever we, we actually filmed a podcast about it and actually it's significant just because of recent events. Um, there was, uh, the time I got to apply my karate stuff because oh, yeah. Yeah. because uh, one of my clients' husbands attacked her outside the dojo, which was lovely. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, you know, it was... honestly, twenty twenty one was uh, karate speaking. Like mm-hmm. it was, it was not a good year for me. Yeah, I felt like I did. I fell behind, like not fell behind, but mm. just hadn't progressed very much. I mm. hit a plateau, and I just was like mm-hmm. grinding through it. And it was it was one of those times where he's like. In our karate, I know in our karate life, there's plateaus and peaks, mm-hmm. and sometimes there's valleys. And I just felt like I was on the biggest plateau ever. You yeah. Know, just working, and not working hard, but just going through the motions and doing it and trying and, and training and just not really having any kind of breakthrough. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I don't know, it was a little depression, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. That yeah, was like one of those points where I was like, this sucks. Yeah. You know, but that's the thing about karate, I guess, or any kind of art that after you hit a certain standard or you hit a, hit a certain level in time training or effort where you just have to, you know what, these these things are going to happen. You mm-hmm. just kind of work through them and, yeah. you know, march on, I guess. Yeah. I think for me, like, I, I felt like that a little bit just because, um, you know, I had started an internship in the summer and then it turned into another job. So I've got like three jobs. So I think all of that and being focused on that, it's just made it harder to be able to train. Um, so um, that sucked because it's been essentially like once a week that I've had dedicated training. And that's, it's it's enough to make some small changes, but ain't much changed since like out of yeah. June. So that's been tough. Yeah. yeah it was, so far, you know, 2022 has been not bad. Mm-hmm. It's just... Uh, I think there's a lot of hope, you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like it's starting to get back to the normal, like, routine of being able to go to seminars and getting those little breaks to kind of not only train under someone or somebody else or, or different perspectives, but, like, get mm-hmm. to hang out with your karate buddies and, and get away from the normal grind. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, I don't know, after a while, you just see the bad crap you do in your karate. Mm-hmm. You don't really see the good stuff. You don't realize it. Mm-hmm. So... You feel like 2021 was like that? Like, not seeing the good Dude, stuff? Dude, 2021 was, like, purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, in I limbo. Was, I was one... I was... Honestly, I was really wanting one one thing or another. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just... It wouldn't... It wasn't either. It was just this constant stage gray. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, with, uh, you know, Sunday morning... Um, Winter, Florida winter kickle is, is just around the corner. Mm-hmm. We'll get back to be able to do that in person. Um, mm-hmm. We started our black belt classes, our monthly black belt training together. Mm-hmm. Back started up. that back up. Things like that are kind of, it's just, it's encouraging. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then being around like-minded people. Yeah. You know, like our students, they're like-minded with us because it's their experience. Mm-hmm. Like that's all they know really right now. Yeah. Um, it's just to be good around other people that have that same approach. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. And the dojo has been interesting and I, we've probably commented on it a couple of times in podcasts last year, but, um, you know, in 2020, um, you know, we shut down for a little bit and opened back up and like our kids classes were doing great, but our adults classes were like 
dying yeah. to the point that we almost shut down one of the adults classes because it just didn't have anybody in it. Um, and um, yeah. that was probably fall of 2020. And then starting last year, we just started to have this slow influx of teens and adults. And that's probably, um, if everyone comes, it's like our largest class now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's actually not just us. You know, I've seen on Facebook, other dojos are experiencing the same thing yeah. where their teens and their adults classes are actually really full. Yeah, I, I think it's just the ebb and flow of like karate mm-hmm. itself, and mm-hmm. you know, if you look over the decades and stuff, there's these times where it's just a purely kid thing, and then those kids kind of grow up and step away from karate, mm-hmm. and they grow up more, and they're like, I miss karate, and they come back, and there's like, yeah, that, and you know, just a natural ebb and flow. Um, and it probably was not from karate in the Olympics, mm. and if you have not listened to that episode, go watch it mm. or listen, because that was not impressive. So I'm sure that no one was inspired to do karate from that. Uh. <laughs> I wouldn't be so so sure about it. I think there's a lot of people that want to do competitive karate or sport karate. Okay. But I feel like there's other people that are just searching for something else. Like the teens and adults, are, the teens, I don't know necessarily know what they're searching for, but they kind of find that in the community. Mm-hmm. The adults definitely find, are searching for some more stability. Yeah. That's more of a community in a sense of not only doing an art, but like trying to improve their Maybe their mentalist mental state or, you know, their spirit in a sense. So mm-hmm. it's kind of nice. I mean, it, I saw a meme the other day. I'm about to put that cat in the box. I'm going to start squirting her with the water gun in a second. Good Lord. I hate cats, man. A She's, dog did, our dog her. didn't do like, stuff just, like that. Right? No, that's true. She just scratched on the floor and stuff. Yeah. Our <laughs> dog would just hang out and tip tap and please, please love, love us and like nudge us and stuff. But this Coco cat wants here, to bite. She wants to knock over the camera and do all kinds of stuff. Well, you know, as of um, last week, our dojo has actually been open for five years. Yeah. So maybe wow. taking this like a step back further, um, think about like all the changes we've made in just like five years. Yeah. How different things are from when we first opened. Oh, yeah. Different perspective for sure. Different approach and teaching. Mm-hmm. Better teaching, I feel like. I feel like we've actually been really cra- good craftsmen in a sense, but mm-hmm. we're always trying to involve not only our understanding of karate but like how we relate it to people uh-huh. and understand like what people are looking for yeah you know a lot of times i think we go to a dojo and, and the sensei has an idea of what karate is mm. to to him for her for sure but like and then he poses that idea on other people mm. and other people are looking at it for different reasons you know mm. rick says that all the time that you know some guys come in because they don't want to be a bully be bullied anymore and some people go in just for the community mm. you know and other people are self-defense and it's just it stuck to me, and and um, I feel like we, I've tried to do a better approach about that. Mm-hmm. You know, not trying to force these these people past what they're interested in, and, and just kind of meet them where they're at, and you know, feed them constantly, and encourage them to hopefully take it as a, a lifelong art. But yeah, well, I think one thing that I appreciate that I that I didn't understand five years ago was the way that we have like our class structured to where. Um, each class actually has more specific, fo- like it has specific Goals, focus. Yeah. Yeah. So we're not just doing kata, kihon, kumite in every single class. Every class has like, it's oriented differently. I swear she's turning the thing. She's Everything's oriented differently depending on who it is. So like we have a four and five year olds class. They do get to do some karate, but a lot of it is just learning class structure. So they have a certain amount of time they get to train. And, right. you know, six to eight year olds has their own thing. Nine to 12 year olds has their thing. You know, teens and adults has been great because as we've built it, we've been able to do more application stuff, which we always talked about. So, yeah. you know, it's been it's been interesting, an interesting transition and in, in how like we have kind of unified our our yeah. teaching on that. I think in 2022, uh, I think a personal goal for myself is to actually encompass more of the sport karate. Like okay. Offer avenues for those children or, or kids and teens and adults or whatever. This who camera's want bothering me. I got to fix it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put the cat on the back porch. That might be a good idea. Cats, boy. Yeah. I'm definitely a dog person. Anyway, what, what were we saying about karate Incorporating stuff? the opportunities to, to, to train and... and I'm sorry to compete in, in tournaments and and you know kind of explore that avenue of karate with students with students mm-hmm. and just you know beyond the fact oh I know where a tournament is and just kind of send them their way but actually you know maybe cater to them just a little bit and offer certain things like well we've never actually just sent a student to a tournament well we've we've always told them oh there's a tournament coming up and then kind mm-hmm. of just dropped it but mm-hmm. you know recently some of the parents have asked about that and some of the adults I think would be interested in it I think it'd be just another layer to the cake, you know what I'm saying? Like, just yeah. something to, to not only 
add to the whole general karate dojo, but to add to the community and the experiences. And it diversifies like what what the what the focus is like right. it's nice to have a change of focus because if you hit a plateau you have something else to focus on yeah. um but you know the other thing is like you learn how to control yourself physically emotionally yeah. um whenever you get into that high pressure situation which you know i'm sorry guys i don't have i haven't gotten a lot of sleep the past couple of days um it, it, whenever you're in the dojo, you should be able to experience some of that high pressure yeah. stuff. But it's nice to do it in a tournament setting, right. you know, and and do it against people you don't know. Yeah, so. yeah. I always found it motivating. I always it was very easy to set a simple goal. You mm-hmm. know, uh, this date, the tournament, I want to do well. I'm, I'm easily motivated that way. Uh-huh. Um, just to to be motivated to improve. Mm. It, sometimes it's really trying. You know, I don't mind yeah. training by myself and to, to get better. But mm-hmm. the problem is. is when you do that, you don't really see the pro- progress yourself. Well, you'd have to like video and look back right. diligently. Yeah, you gotta really do some some. You know, I need to experience the progress. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I need to experience it firsthand. Now, there's times when people look at you and go, "Wow, man, you've changed. Your karate has changed." Mm-hmm. And that's but far in between. You know, sometimes you need that. For me, I guess I need that reassurance on right. occasion. So, maybe, yeah, I'm hoping we can get into that more this year. You know, I, I. I I feel like there was a time period where, like like I said last year, where it was kind of like, eh, kind of like trying to improve, but felt like some of the concepts were maybe a bit ambiguous, and I wasn't really sure what to fix. Right now, I have something very specific and concrete that I'm working on. It's either right or it's wrong. To me, that's just easier to conceptualize. Um, I get that some, a lot of in, in a lot of karate, there are shades of gray, but this particular thing, there's really not. Um, so. Being able to work on things like that and just give me something solid to hold on to, to, to cling on to, that to me makes it just, it's just, a, it's a nice um, reinforcement that I'm kind of headed the right direction. So. Yeah, yeah. Eh, I don't know. Not, not I, to I say came, I would get it right away, but uh, you know. I came up in sport karate. That's mainly what we did in Japan is what we did in New York. So I enjoy that tournament level and it, it kind of gave me these highlights in the year where I could judge myself amongst my peers. You know, and then after a while, it became this thing where it fed into my ego as a young, you know, as a teenager. Mm-hmm. Um, and that part I didn't, and I look back and go, that was not the greatest, but. You going to compete? I, I was thinking about it, man. Thinking about it. Go to AAU, maybe do some show movie phone because they offer that now. Oh, really? Yeah, instead of the, the WKF, like, tag stuff, it's old oh, school, okay. like, knock you and the good punches. Like, you know, stuff I like. <laughs> yeah. See, the only thing is, like, I. I don't want to go and compete against high school and early college girls. Nothing against y'all. Yeah, I see, just don't want to compete against you. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm fortunate because I'm 45 now. So uh-huh. I'm in the old man's like yeah. division. So it would probably be me and some other dude. You mm-hmm. know, and we'll, we'll reminisce about the good old days and just have fun out there. So mm-hmm. it's not a big deal. Like for you, for the next, what, six or seven years, you'll be in the... 18 to 35. I'm pretty sure it's... Is it 35? I thought it was like 40 or something. No, it's 18 to 35. Okay. So, not that bad, but still. Well, my thought was, is maybe like occasionally competing in like kata stuff. Mm. Um, Not because I'm going to change my karate in any capacity toward what they want, but I'm going to try to make you know, technique as pristine as possible Mm -hmm. and then just show up with that and just be like, what, son? Yeah, this is what I am. (laughs) What you think? Is well, it right? Is yeah. it wrong? Well, <laughs> well I, you're wrong. I, well, I wasn't I'm saying that when we do sport karate that we have to, well, adhere to their adhere, adhere to their their ideals. Personally, mm-hmm. you know, personally as a competitor, I'm gonna do my thing and that's it. Yeah. I'm gonna follow the sparring rules. I'm gonna follow the kata rules, but I'm not gonna change my karate to embellish the the sport karate. Mm-hmm. Um, now, for our students, I'm going to explain to them there's two differences. There's definitely a, a difference in sport karate and, and tournament karate, or traditional karate. Mm-hmm. And let them make that choice. Mm-hmm. I feel like some of those kids are going to be, it'll give them an avenue to be inspired. Do you think we have any adults who want to do it? Bro, I think we got a couple. Really? Yeah, I think I think a couple of them will be nice. about it, you know, just to have yeah. a good time. I think it'd be, I think that would be so much more fun than the kids. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, kids. Um, I think watching the adults compete would be so much more fun. <laughs> Plus, it's just a good way to spend a day. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, most tournaments are Saturday mornings till about two or three in the afternoon. They're not. Oh, I don't know about that. The well, AAU tournaments back in the day lasted all day. Yeah, but we're not trying to. You know, I'm not trying to go and, and go to regionals or super regionals or anything like that. 
I'm not trying to be that kind of dojo, but well, I'm just saying the the lowest level tournament that we used to go to in Tarpon Springs was all day, but it was a lot of people competing. You, yeah, but you were probably what? How old were you? I was like 10, 11, 12 years old. Yeah, so I felt like all day, and it could have been. No, because we would leave at like noon, and they would compete until like six, seven at night. Because they would have like all of the prelims, and they'd have the finals or whatever, or they ha- I don't know, they had something, and they had like adults later on. I think I think they told me it was all day. Well. It was huge. Well, I'll say this. Place we were Consider the eating. source. What? It was on the. It was on their their schedule. Okay, it literally yeah. said like six seven o'clock. That's to me. Don't just at a bit, me, bro. That, that's that's just a bit much. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I I felt like. Um. I was actually telling somebody this earlier that um, I usually previously would train like do weight training like four or five days a week. Yeah. And um, I'm like changing the subject. Are you done with the tournament stuff? Sorry. It's all good. I'm used to it. <laughs> Whatever. Go ahead. No, I'm good. Okay. Well, I used to like weight train like four or five days a week, and um, it became, it, it, it's just becoming more difficult to get it all in, and I like feel really bad about it about mm. the fact that I can't get those times in, mm. and um, so I've changed my um, training schedule to where I'm trying to just do weight training like twice a week. And then I'm also trying to do, like, some warm-up kata stuff, like, before I do weight training to try to stay more consistent. So I've been kind of repping out kata and stuff, so could be good for tournament training, stuff like that. Yeah. 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 I, I got back on my Saturday morning swing. Uh, that's yeah. That's my thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I just love getting up early and doing that. Yeah. And it's been nice. So that's kind of been the reason why I'm a little bit more motivated. I, I fell back into that, that routine of being able to, you know, get up and train and do my thing and how the music loud and mm-hmm. you know i like that that's that's part of it but now i got something to train for too so it'll be all right yeah i think it'd be fun yeah um what else what do you think about the dojo this year what i think about the dojo this year mm-hmm. it's the dojo this coming year well besides the the uh the you know sport karate stuff i think um we're getting some of our teens and adults to where oh man i don't know man if it continues to grow, we're going to have to split, eventually split that class up, dude. We got nowhere to split them. We got I'm, nowhere to go. We're doing this like four nights a week, so we ain't got nowhere to go. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we had this problem before, you know, with the kids' class yeah. and added the intermediates and, you know, you know finally. It was, I think that was part of the, the success mm-hmm. recipe was that we were able to offer classes that met, you know, mm-hmm. people. And maybe what we'll do is. We may have to put the adult intermediates with the kid intermediates. <laughs> Just have an intermediate class. I don't know. That might be that might be something. Yeah. Yeah. That or we we bring in the uh, intermediates adults to uh, the Monday night class. Or we move them to later. I don't know. Hey, Let's talk about I, that. I'm not, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that either. It's problems <laughs> beyond the dojo, right? So Logistics. It, it's it's yeah beyond the dojo. It's always about beyond the training on the floor. It's, mm. it's beyond this like whole like. I, we got the training stuff, man. We've been doing it, both been doing it for all our lives. Basically, we understand how to train. Mm-hmm. It's the how do we manage the dojo beyond that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I feel like we've got a lot of growth there. Yeah. You know, one thing we've we talked <clears throat> about for a few years is because um, we're, you know, fully independent at this point is um, like our syllabus expectations. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, I came up in a dojo where we like kind of went by the JK syllabus and kind of didn't know what a syllabus was <laughs> <laughs> um, and never really like trained specifically for the syllabus so people would get on their exam and they're just like I have no idea what I'm supposed to do so um, you know we've we've tried to use a general syllabus as a guideline but there are things that we don't really agree with so yeah. we've actually we started this process what I said I talked about it last year but I think we started the process in like August or, se- oh, or yeah. September, yeah. kind of going through and weeding things out. And so we've got a few more changes to make. But yeah. Yeah. I think, but, but so far, I mean, the JK syllabus is a great, is a great guideline anyway. Mm-hmm. Let's just be real. Yeah. Um, well, that's not the template that we started with, but yeah, it is. It is a, it is a great guideline and we just kind of base what we, we believe is there. But we do some small twerk, tweaking because of the way we teach. We do some small twerking. Twerking. Well, because we're white, you know. You know what twerking is, right? It's when you shake your butt. Yeah, but they usually like they'll sometimes like do a handstand and twerk upside down against uh, the wall. I think you're. That's where people like fall on their head and stuff. You spend too much time watching people twerk. 
I'm not do. I'm not. How do you know so much? That's about like it? like a twerk fail or something. They like do a handstand uh, and then like, okay, kids don't look that up. So yeah, it's not healthy. The- <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, well, I mean, clicking I- here and there on the syllabus is not bad. Yeah, not a bad idea. I mean, it's just it has to fit our dojo and our and our perspective on karate, and, and that's where I think um, the JK idea of certain things just doesn't. We don't agree with that progress, uh, progression or uh, perspectives. So. I would say, for the vast majority, we do because there. Well, I mean, for the vast majority of like basic kihon and stuff like that, like we totally agree with that because you can pretty much use m- any basic techniques and have you know expectations that that advance throughout the ranks. Yeah, um, fun, even fundamental, if it's fundamentals like. are, makes total sense. But when you get to a certain level, we're talking about like. You know, five step and one step. Key home yeah, we had a lot of discussions about that. And yeah. then the jui pon kumite compared to jui When do you kumite. actually when do you incorporate do it? How, yeah. What's the significance of it? And, you know, there's people that swear by that. And then there's people that, like for myself, I never did jui pon. We went from We did. We went from one step straight into jui kumite and you just figured it out. We never actually sparred till after showdown. I don't think we ever sparred. Till after showdown, except for in a tournament, not even prepping for a tournament, just in the tournament. Yeah, <laughs> so. we, was free. we we sparred in Japan. Yeah, and you know, but the in Japan it was like uh, we have we would have like a special thirty minute after class where Sensei would make us stay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got a tournament coming, you got to spar. You know, especially when because we they did it by middle school. You know, if you're in middle school, you started sparring. Okay, it didn't really matter what what grade you were, or what level you were, you know your belt lies. It was about you're a certain age so yeah well we we like we do the like (laughs) once every two weeks 30 minutes sparring but we do have an age limit yeah but we also have a rank limit we don't just we don't like white belts doing it because they're just they really don't know enough at that point we feel if you if you want to beat each other up in the backyard go home and do that we don't need you to do it at our dojo yeah you know and you need to have some concepts of we're not saying all white belts want to do that i'm just saying that's our approach. That's our attitude. No matter who's mm-hmm. asking us as a white belt or a wheel belt, we, we generally are like, nah, you're not there yet. Yeah. And it's not a reflection of who they are. It's a reflection of our perspective and, and that line we draw in the sand. Mm-hmm. You know, and I feel like that's been probably another thing over the five years that we really got um, better at is like being confident in the lines we draw, the boundaries we draw within our teaching and, and mm-hmm. who does what and how oh, we do yeah. it. You know, that confidence level is, is grown so much that I feel like <laughs> Go ahead. I guess I'm to say after you're done. It's a it's a pure reflection on like how the dojo is starting to starting to flourish mm-hmm. because like I, I believe that students are looking for that structure mm-hmm. and our confidence kind of ex- it kind of makes makes them feel confident in what we're doing too. Mm-hmm. So. When you put those boundaries on people and you do have a structure, people flourish within that whether they think they will or not. Oftentimes, especially yeah. if you're good at guiding, um, it'll actually cause people to excel in that minimal amount that they're able to work on at a time. This is just kind of an example of that. It is not related to karate. I had to go to this like county meeting last night that ran until, probably ran until like two in the morning. Um, but one of the issues was that the person running the meeting wouldn't cut people off when they were off topic. And if they had done that, it would have been a more a more productive conversation. And somebody told me, they're like, wow, you would do a really good job at that. I'm thinking, and I thought about that. I was like, yeah, actually, I probably would because I know how to tell people when to shut up or when to stay in their lane. But I think it's all this practice with, you yeah, know, we don't teachers, tell kids to shut up. But yeah, well, <laughs> Teachers in, in, in general who have that experience, yeah. they deal with it day in and day out. Mm-hmm. You know? It's just something you always do and you can see it coming. Mm-hmm. Right? You, can, you know the topic is about to go off, you know. Yeah, about or you know that topic. that they're trying to train essentially off topic. They're trying to train away from what they know. Just like the kid that comes in yesterday. Yeah, we had a new kid come in yesterday, and this happens very often. And oftentimes they grow out of it. And they the cat just knocked a bunch of stuff down. Um, then they'll come in and they'll be like, "Well, I know how to kick, and I know this ninja move, and I know that ninja move, and I'm a good student, and this, that, and the other." And we're just like, "Hold up, you don't know anything." <laughs> No. We're going to teach you how to do these things properly, yeah. or at least the way that we do them, you know? Mm-hmm. So they they definitely, well, when am I going to learn how to backflip? Well, you're not here. <laughs> I mean, if you know how to do it, you can teach me, and I might be able to do it. But, yeah, that's, there's a lot of that, I think, in the beginning, like learning how to take people from being so 
squirrel. Yeah. Take them from that and like put them back on track and be yeah. like, look, this is where you are. That's where you're headed. You want to be there. You're not going to round about it. You're going to have to wait and work that way. Yeah. Well, a lot of times we already know that, you know, people have weird expectations of what karate is. And if it doesn't meet their expectations, they don't generally last that long. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I think I think in uh, in a lot of cases people's expectations like they put they do eventually be like, oh, "Okay, yeah, this was different than what I thought, but it's okay." Yeah. I think it depends on the age and maturity of the student. You don't think so? No. I've seen <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've seen full-grown men mm-hmm. come to a dojo and, you know, not not recently cuz when we first started when I first started teaching in Ocala, um there were a couple men there that did MMA and everything else. Oh, okay. And they, they just full on expected that they're going to go to a karate dojo and spar. Mm, okay. And it's a traditional approach. You do it against the air, do it all this, and mm. that's how it goes. That's just the way it is, mm-hmm. you know? And um, they didn't like it. Mm-hmm. And we, we literally would have to use drills to kind of show them that where they're lacking. Because mm-hmm. they were like, let's just spar. I'm like, dude. Yeah. All right. You know, thankfully now, right now within the dojo, we don't have, we have guys, we have younger men mm-hmm. and they're, you can tell they're excited for that idea, but they also respect our approach right. and are willing to, to kind of fall in line and follow what we're doing. So, you know, it's nice. Like I said, it's, it's that confidence in what you're doing. Yeah. They kind of just like, Hey, if you don't like what we do. You don't I, have to stay here. You I think I'm that's saying? one thing I've grown in a lot over the past five years because, um, you know, my background didn't have a lot of applying of karate to actual combat situations. So I was very lacking in confidence when it came to that. So whenever someone would come and that's what they expected, it was very difficult for me to explain to them like, Hey, that's where we're headed, but we're not there yet. So it's cool. Like you can come along with us or you can walk away and it's fine. I was a little bit more of a people pleaser and like, I just, was so concerned about the fact that we were doing something that wasn't meeting people's expectations. Um, now I, you know, I I am better at combat because actually training with Jeremiah has made a huge difference for that with me because I actually have somebody to train with, um, and he's good. Um, but the other thing is um, just you know going through that process over and over again. That compliment was pretty forced. No, it wasn't. It was somebody to train with, and he's good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but also seeing, like a that, seeing that process happen over and over again with students where, like, they maybe start off with that expectation. We kind of show them, like, hey, this is the basic premise. This yeah. is where you're headed. And then seeing them, like, actually kind of adhere to that. Like, I think we have some, some recently who maybe yeah. thought that and actually learned to adhere. But they yeah. also, because we're growing, like, this is usually happens with teens and adults. With kids, they just kind of like whatever. <laughs> with teens and adults, this is where this is where like the, the the stuff happens. I think also them coming in and like they do like an intro class or they do their first class and they're like, eh, I don't really know. But then they see all of these other people, these yeah. other teens and adults, training and yeah. adhering to this and looking like total badasses while they're doing it. I think that's part of it too. Is like you know yeah. being able to see like, hey, they're not BSing me. There actually is some legitimacy to this, and there's people who've dedicated time to this. So I think it'll probably be okay. Yeah. Well, that's you know the beautiful thing. What we're the times we're living in right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, like I said, karate dojos are ebb and flow. Yeah, constant ebb and flow. We just gotta, you know, embrace what we have and be able to kind of pivot when we need to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got anything to add? No. What you working on? That was kind of all over the place, but yeah. Um, I just want to say, uh, welcome back, guys. <laughs> welcome back, you, you. and us. <laughs> for the for the eight listeners. <laughs> yeah, for the five of you listening. Yeah. Um, I am besides like consistency. Oh, so in January, this is part of the reason why we weren't here. Uh, in January, I was very sick for uh, like two and a half weeks. I had a stomach bug, and then I got COVID. I got the the lame COVID, so I'm not a superior, you know status Mm. i didn't survive the real deal so it was just the baby one Mm. um but it it tore me up pretty good um so because of that a lot of my strength is down it's been difficult to train and get back to things um even with i sent a video of like front kicking and doing some stuff and our teacher was like "Ugh." (laughs) he was like it's probably just because you've been sick and i'm like i've worked on front kick for a long time Mm. um so actually i'm working on um 
some timing between um, uh, my Getty Oizuki, so front kick and punching. Um, essentially, in Jian, um, whenever you have like the front kick double punch sections, um, I was for a while working on not rotating my shoulders because you're not supposed to do that there. You're supposed to actually remain square. Um, but the thing I'm working on now is the actual timing of delivering the first punch because I'm actually doing it too early. So that anytime you're doing punches like that, they're supposed to be at the end of the technique and that's not what I'm doing. So that's what I'm working on. Hmm. Um, and today I actually got to with lift weights and this I think was the first day I lifted since I got COVID, which was late January. So, hmm. yeah. What you working on? Uh... Spent a lot of time lately. I've been spending time trying to get my cardio back up, mm-hmm. trying to burn calories, um, get in better shape. So I've been doing a lot of like. Well, Sean Sean Paget, our friend, told us about the ten minute thing where you just mm-hmm. hits a timer and you just do karate for ten minutes. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Like that's my warm up, and then I'll do um, things I'm working on. Technically, I'm working on <laughs> step and punch. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I've got this feeling that my my limb speed is quicker now. Like, I control it better throughout mm-hmm. the step. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to coordinate that with driving the knee. Mm-hmm. So just working on the, the coordination better, step and punch. I feel like I've made some very minute breakthrough. Mm-hmm. It feels better. It feels more relaxed. I don't feel... When I watch myself, I'm not shouldery. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't lift my shoulder up. I'm staying low. And it's just, you know... And I'm consistently punching later instead of starting right with the step. So... Those things encourage me, so step yeah. and punch. And GN, I mean, GN's for been well. Mm-hmm. I like the kata too, so mm-hmm. it's one good. of those katas that I enjoy doing, so I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. So. You do. Yeah. Cool. Yay. All right. So this if has we been don't... your installment <laughs> of the Beyond the Dojo podcast. So if we don't see you for a couple of months, just know that we're thinking about you. Which I've never seen you. I don't think. I don't but... think I've ever. You know, that's a strange thing. So. We've had a couple of people say, oh, yeah, I, I know you're from the podcast. And I've always been like, oh, God, which Hi. one? I'm, yeah. <laughs> like, which one? Because I, Which I, one did we embarrass oh ourselves in? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whoops. But it's kind of cool that you guys are, are reaching out and saying hey and everything to us. That, that's really cool. Hi. Um, just know that if we act awkward, it's not because of you. It's just we're weird. It's not you. We do like you. We do appreciate you listening. I don't know why you do. But, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Sometimes I listen to me too. It's just a little bit of narcissism. Everybody's got to have some. So. By sometimes she means all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the editor of the podcast, so I have to listen to it. So, <laughs> just have to make sure we didn't, you know, do anything that would come back to haunt us later or whatever. <laughs> I yeah, I don't think I have to worry about that. Probably not. Probably not. All right. Okay, this has been real. Bye. Bye.